Professor Sapathitas Gupta stated in his recent landmark review that our economies, livelihoods and well-being all depend on our most precious asset, nature. He went on to stress that we are not only dependent on nature, but are in fact part of it. Therefore, if we are to alleviate poverty, disease, degradation and extinction caused by nature's decline, we must exist harmoniously within it. An ecosystem is the combination of living organisms and their non-living surroundings in a specific area that interact with one another in order to survive. Coral reefs are a great example of an ecosystem. Their living organisms include fish, turtles and coral, whilst rocks and sand make up some of the non-living part. Interactions in a coral reef range from organisms eating one another to sea creatures using rocks and caves for protection. In practice, ecosystems can vary in size massively. A single rotting log and the fungi and beetles within it, or the vast Amazon rainforest with its uncountable species, both can be considered ecosystems. However, really large areas are typically known as biomes, such as the Arctic tundra and African savanna. The composition of these biomes is largely dictated by two factors, temperature and precipitation. This leads to areas of the globe at similar latitudes having similar characteristics, although physical geography like mountains and local weather patterns can also affect this. A similar set of rules can be identified for aquatic environments, with salinity, depth and flow of the water dictating the habitat. Ecologists have devised many ways of representing ecosystems, but perhaps the most approachable depiction are food webs. These show energy flows between different species and usually begin with the conversion of sunlight into organic matter by organisms known as producers. In the case of UK woodland, a key producer is the oak tree. Its acorns and leaves provide food for herbivorous primary consumers, such as squirrels and caterpillars. The food web then progresses to the omnivorous secondary consumers, like shrews, who eat these animals and the producers until eventually reaching the carnivorous apex consumers, in this case predators like foxes and owls. The length of such webs is limited by the efficiency of energy transfer between each level. Generally, only about 10% of the energy that's stored as biomass in one level ends up stored as biomass in the next level, due to energy used up for heat, movement and incomplete digestion. This also means that consumers must eat many animals from the level below, and so toxins in small concentrations can accumulate to dangerous levels. However, the web does not end here. Upon the death of the apex consumers, their organic matter is broken down and utilised by decomposers such as earthworms and fungi. Decomposers provide the soil with nutrients that are in turn consumed by plants. In this way, the ecosystem becomes circular and self-sustaining. These diagrams brilliantly highlight the interconnected nature of ecosystems, with each species occupying its place known as its ecological niche, and the dependency of each level of life on the others. This is exemplified in the case of keystone species, without which the ecosystem would be dramatically different or would cease to exist altogether. Elephants are considered keystone species as their consumption of shrubs and small trees prevent the vegetation succession that would cause the savanna grassland to become forested. However, keystone species are not the only species that can affect the ecosystem as a whole. In fact, a change in the number of one species will likely affect all others. For example, if a forest of oak trees are cut down, there will be less acorns available for the squirrels, leading to lower squirrel numbers and consequently less foxes too. Conversely, low numbers of foxes could then lead to a peak in squirrels the following year, and so a cycle of boom and bust is established until an equilibrium level known as the carrying capacity is reached. Some disturbances, such as lightning strikes, are a natural part of ecosystems and allow organisms with specialist niches to survive. Unfortunately, major man-made disturbances such as climate change or urbanisation can overwhelm an ecosystem, resulting in lasting damage. To recap, an ecosystem is made up of a complex, interacting web of living organisms and their non-living surroundings. The nature of the ecosystem is typically dictated by temperature and precipitation levels. Food webs can depict the energy flows in an ecosystem and help highlight the role of keystone species and the boom and bust of population dynamics. One factor that allows ecosystems to be more resilient to disturbances is a high level of biodiversity, a concept we will explore further in our next video.